despite how dysfunctional the Lakers look right now, there still aren't too many things that frighten me. Like, I guess Giannis and the Bucks, KD with how good he's been playing recently, injuries, and Bron's Twitter account. But that man, he scares me. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's me, Levels, back for another installment of About Last Night. And of course, we're talking about that NBA action because there's a ton of it over the God knows how many months, and I can't wait to talk about it all. It's so amazing. Let's get started. Hawks, Mavs. For any of you who don't know, I love the city of Atlanta. The Atlanta Falcons are my football team, and I still really like watching the Hawks play. Let's get into it. The Hawks looked great. Their depth is amazing. And despite Luka and Trey not playing very well, the Hawks clearly looked like the better team last night. I know people had their gripes about Chris Asperzingis and the rest of that Mavericks team. That's a genuine concern. Like, going into the playoffs, like, this is something that has to be figured out by the Mavs. But, <coughs> Trey over Luka. <coughs> Oh my god, excuse me for the cough. You hear that? All truth aside, I think I love this matchup so much. That narrative between Trey and Luka is just so much fun to watch, especially when they always bring it up. It's always so exciting for me. But I think the Hawks are going to make a deeper playoff run than the Mavs are, obviously. I think the only thing that really is going to impede the Hawks from moving any further are the is Miami. Like, obviously, the, the Nets and the Bucks are their own tier, but I think Miami in general is going to cause them some problems, especially like so, sort of in the second round-ish. I don't know if they're better than Miami because Miami. I mean, we might as well just transition off of Miami now. Miami beat the Bucks one thirty-seven to ninety-five. Like, I mean, and granted, I'm under the group of people who don't take the first two games that seriously. They are important, obviously, but like, let's not jump to conclusions here. They played absolutely fantastic if it's against the championship Bucks. Like, Miami does not play around. I think Tyler Hero and Jordan Poole are going to scrap for most improved player of the year. Bam looks great. Kyle Lyra looks like he fits perfectly. PJ, they just got PJ Tucker, right? The, they look like a dangerous team. They look like they're going to be, to me, they're going to be third seed after the Bucks and the Nets and then Hawks after them and the Knicks. But they look like a title contending team right now. Do not sleep on Miami. <sighs> Laker Nation, let's talk. Steph is going to ruin everything. I've seen that Clippers game, and I know, like I said, I know I'm under the group of people that doesn't want to take the first two games too seriously. The Warriors looked fantastic. The Warrior and not even Steph. Let's just put Steph to the side for a minute. The Warriors look great. Without I mean, Steph Curry is just the, the cherry on top. They get Klay Thompson back, they're the, they're the most dangerous team in the West. As of right now. It's it's ridiculous. It's just like they like granted, Steve Curry, besides Greg Popovich, is the only NBA coach that actually runs plays in this league. Everyone else is just top of the key picking roles and ISOs. Like, he actually knows how to utilize his players. It's obvious when you watch him play. Like, these dudes are running off screen. Like, ball screens, ball movement. Dudes are crashing the glass. Like, just movement everywhere. And the passing is just, it's immaculate. It really is. It's immaculate. And I can't imagine, like... Dude, it's going to get way worse when Klay Thompson's back. And I'm a Lakers fan. I want the, I want the Lakers to come out the West. Like, these guys are amazing. Steph is going to ruin everything. And, of course, Klay, too, because he's coming back. But, like, the, the, the Warriors are going to ruin everything. And I sort of like the thumbnail for this video. Like, I, I, I'm watching the Warriors, and I'm like, oh, shit. Like, d these guys are, like, they're the, they're the best team in the West when they get Klay Thompson back. Like, it's not even close. Like, I know the Jazz, you know, and they have Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert's been playing great. The Clippers don't have uh, Kawhi back yet, so I'm not too worried about that. But it's just like, as a Lakers fan, like we have to get there. Like All the time we're spending figuring out how to play with each other, they're figuring out just how good they are. The Warriors did not look afraid against the Lakers on, I believe, the Friday. No, no, I think it was for Tuesday, right? Tuesday or Wednesday. They didn't look afraid at all. They were not afraid of the moment at all. Granted, Steph did quote-unquote play like trash but like Jordan Poole and the rest of those guys were doing exactly what it takes to be a deep playoff team and that's scary as shit for a Lakers fan so just for the rest of these NBA games Sixers versus Nets I don't put too much stock into that game and I don't keep saying that but you know the Sixers don't really have Simmons and the Nets don't have Kyrie so that game is kind of weird obviously the Nets are better than the Sixers even if they had a playoff series today I think the Nets would win like six but hopefully those the, both those players come back soon like eh, they're both entertaining players to watch Ben Simmons is like a the second best defender in the NBA after Rudy Gobert and Kyrie is one of the 
probably the most entertaining player to watch in the league. So it's like, wish they, I honestly wish both of them would come back and just, it, it's, it, the league is better with the both of them in it. And this is probably the last thing we're going to talk about for today because I usually only review games I've watched like previously. Like that's why it's called about last night. Bulls and Lakers. I'm going to go to the Lakers a little bit in depth after I talk about the Bulls. And this sort of, you know, ties into the topic about let's not take these first two games too seriously. The Bulls are 2 0. The Bulls to me are an AC to team. At the end of the year, they're going to be an AC to team. I don't think the Wizards are going to catch up to them, but they play great. They're a fast break team. They're young. Guys like Alice Caruso, Lonzo Ball, DeMar DeRozan sort of dumped off from their previous teams look like they have a lot to prove this season. Zach Levine, right? I think they're going to be an AC to team. Bulls, focus on getting people into the stands, getting generating hype for the team. That's They're doing exactly that. Like, Dude, they're flooding the stadium, flooding the stands to watch Lonzo throw half-court lobs to Caruso or DeRozan or Zach Levine. Like, the, the show is here in Chicago, right? And they're going to make the playoffs, and I'm happy for them. But don't act like they're like a sixth or fifth-seeded team. Like, they haven't – their the quote-unquote nucleus hasn't established itself yet. Everyone ahead of them, the Knicks, the Sixers, the Celtics, the Hawks, the Nets, the Bucks, Miami. I said Miami got added a little a couple – few pieces like pj tucker and um kyle lowry all of their foundations have been established chicago hasn't done that yet and that's okay right there's nothing wrong these guys just got together they should be happy if they're making the playoffs right and that's what you should, yes that's what you should expect as a bulls fan lakers fans let's talk i know i said last time you know it's the first game or two don't be too worried, right? And I still honestly feel that way from the bottom of my heart. I don't think the Bulls are going to end up being a, a fifth seed or fourth seed. They just play really great right now at the beginning of the season, right? They have that 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 the, their legs under them. A lot of things I saw I didn't like. Like, you know, the, the LeBron's still tweeting. <laughs> Talking to campaign on the bench, the, the whole altercation between. It just felt like so much wrong happened on one night. It was, it was very weird. Like, let's start with the Rondo finger gun thing. What was that about? Like, he just pointed finger guns at a fan. He slapped his hand away, and that became a story. The whole Anthony Davis and Dwight Howard shoving thing became a story. I know Dwight Howard said that he squashed the beef. I kind of feel like that's sort of because he missed the NBA 75th list. Maybe I'm just thinking too far too hard about it but the Dwight and AD situation the Braun situation the Rondo situation and we lost the Westbrook rocking the baby and then Devin Booker came back and scored on him and rocked the baby I'm looking at the stat sheet no one on the Lakers shot over like I think it's like 44 percent no one on the Suns shot under 40 percent top to bottom I think their least their lowest score was like four points he was like it's like their 11th 12th man granted I'm not jumping ship I'm not you know I'm not going to take it like, oh my God, man, we're done. Another L for the Lakers. I believe they'll figure it out. It's just that these are a couple alarming signs. Frankie V, my dog, you play Rondo and Westbrook on the same court. I will personally fly. I will purchase a ticket to LA. We're going to have a conversation. Why are you putting Rondo and Westbrook in the on the same court at the same time? You want to play him in practice at the same? Have at it. But you have to pick one or the other, right? Neither of them are shooters. Unless one of them suddenly decides to take Steph Curry's master class or something. They're not shooters, right? One has to be on the bench to lead the second unit. And the other one has to be with the starters, right? However you got to do that, hash it out. But like it's got a lot of work on this season. Which, granted, when, it all, when it's all said and done. And we get the, the gold on the ring and the rafter up there. It makes it all the sweeter. It makes it all the sweeter. Like I said, Laker fans, Laker Nation, we're going to be all right. Take a deep breath. Calm down. We're going to be all right. But once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for the view. Thank you so much. And like and subscribe if you haven't already. But um, that's going to be it for me for today. You know, like I said, it's about last night. So, like, I'm going to be posting these videos the day after they happen. And I got to watch all these NBA games to get up, you know, up to date on the stats. So, I'm going to go get back to work. You know, that's it for me today. Take care of yourselves.